I can't control it, then no one will. Sound crazy? Yep, well it is. That is the telltale sign of insanity. And that is the kind of mindset of the people that run the Anti-Defamation League, that run the banks, that run these institutions, the false menace, the Ashkenazi, the Zionist elite, a fraction of families that hide behind good people, that pretend to be rational, logical beings, but are ranting lunatics that in, in places like Israel are utterly convinced that if they can't run the world, no one should have the ability to run the world. And that is exactly how they operate, on threat, on fear, on the madman principle. Running into a bank with explosives strapped on their back saying, if you don't listen to me, I'll blow you all up. It's insanity. It is madness. And quite frankly, the time for them claiming any kind of moral or spiritual mandate is well and truly over. That's one of the things that all of us should clear up. These people are not the chosen people they never were. These people are not Semitic. They never even, none of their relatives were even born in the Middle East. They're from Mongolia. They're from the Kazakhstan, the Kazakh mountains. They're from the Caucasus mountains. They were land bandits. They were swamp dwellers at the, at the mouth of the Nile. They have absolutely no heritage whatsoever to do with Palestine. None. They're pirates. They're haberdashers. And when they did finally uh, find themselves in a position of authority, the first thing they went out and did was wreck things. Now you've heard of Torah, Tara, the law of Torah, the law of the land. Well, some may find it difficult to believe, but there is a very strong connection to the prophet Jeremiah and to the land of Ireland and to the Celt history that extended right across Europe to Turkey and the Middle East, right around the known world, the Celts, and the law of Torah, or Tara. What happened when the Venetians... And the false Menashe. By false Menashe, I mean the Menashe worships uh, Sabaoth. They worship Satan. And they formed a covenant with Satan called the Talmud, where they said, if we control the world and we do evil, then we shall maintain this covenant with you and we shall honor you. Well, I say false Menashe because these people had no biological connection or any connection whatsoever. They were called the Black Khazars. They were the, the, the chiefs of the tribes of the nomads that connected up with the Menashe when they were scattered. And when these Black Khazars took control of places like Venice and Genoa and later Florence, when they found themselves in a position of authority, what did they do? They went and destroyed the spiritual home of the Torah, the Tara, Cromwell, a hired mercenary of the Venetians, destroyed brick by brick, stone by stone, the spiritual home, and totally destroyed any credibility that they have any belief or follow at all the sacred scripture. And that was in the 16th century. And then we come to the 20th century where the Talmud is very clear. You will not return to the promised land. You will not live in the promised land until the end of days. You will not uh, do anything uh, to leave the ghettos. You will live uh, in these communities until the end of days and until the sacrifice of the six, which they interpret as six minutes. So what did they do? And this is the covenant, by the way, with Satan, with Lucifer, with Sobara, with Moloch. 
What do they do? These false menace from Mongolia, from the Caucasus, who were never the, uh, the inheritance, what did they do? They murdered the bloodlines who were connected to the menace. They took their names. The rabbi herded their own into the furnaces and then ran off to Rome to get the new identity and then sail off to America and sail off to Australia and Canada to start a new world, a new life where they wouldn't live in ghettos anymore. They would live in the palaces that they always dreamed of because the end of days had been manufactured by them. The covenant had been utterly and totally now destroyed. So on the one hand, they didn't believe in the Torah, never did, destroyed it 500 years ago, and now they don't believe in the Talmud either. They destroyed that 70 years ago. So for 70 years, they've lied when we think that they worship Satan. They don't worship anything. They stopped worshipping Satan when they destroyed the covenant. And they certainly don't worship God. They destroyed that 500 years ago. These people are in dire need of mental illness. And their madness is that they are literally standing there with a finger on the trigger saying, if you try and move us, we'll destroy everything. And the people that support them in military, in finance, the Shabazz Goy, many, sadly, still think that they need to serve. But no longer are they serving people who are evil. They're serving people who are severely mentally ill. And I say one thing to one group who has served them for those 500 plus years, the Jesuits. The Jesuits, for the first time in their history, are cut free from service, serving their masters, the ones that formed them. For the first time in their history, they're cut free and they are lawfully and legally cut free because there has now been seven deeds of divine protest and dishonour that make it absolutely clear that these insane and mentally ill people have not one ounce of authority spiritually, legally, lawfully. Not one ounce. And the Jesuits are totally and utterly free to pursue either an honourable path and correct the mistakes of the world or show themselves to be unfit to continue as a body by remaining loyal to these people in spite of there being not one inch of lawful reason to do so, but simply out of bloody-mindedness and stupidity, for which the Jesuits are not normally known, and they themselves will be condemned on the 21st of December 2011. So we're in an extraordinary period of history because the veil has lifted and we can now see that the curse of the world is not evil. It is mental illness in the form of bad ideas, ideas that trap people, that spell people, that, that cause them to sit by and watch people who are drowning drown or watch people that need medical attention bleed to death or watch their neighbours being robbed or watch their community being destroyed or sit and starve instead of walking out and saying I can make things you can grow things let's help each other in Australia right now we have faced a major flood in one of our states, Queensland, an enormous once-in-a-hundred-year flood. And it has wreaked havoc for tens of thousands of homeowners and hundreds of thousands of people have been left homeless. And if you've been watching the news, and I hope this has been transmitted, an extraordinary thing is happening, something that is quite unprecedented that we haven't seen in Western communities for some time. People are spontaneously working together People are gaining control and, and without any orders, without any central command, are taking control and there have been literally thousands of examples of heroism where instead of letting people drown in a car, people have come together and saved them. Instead of people being stranded on roofs, people have come and helped them. Instead of people uh, in dire need of medical attention, people have come and saved them. And spontaneously, 
without any uh, orders, without anyone saying you must do this, people have proven that they are competent and capable, more than capable, of organising themselves and saving themselves and running themselves. And I think this will be the, the sign of the recovery of, of Queensland. Well, Australians are not unique. America was founded on these principles. Canada was founded on these principles. And yet we have been convinced and conned and tricked and spelled into believing that we are incompetent and that these powers that they hold are far too great and that they will, can drive around our house and come out and that these Shabazz Goy, these, these cowards that serve insane people can convince us that we shouldn't continue, that we need to hold on our hands, that we need to uh, obediently stand to the side and starve to death. And that's exactly what millions and millions of people are doing. Well, I must say, a lot of people are not. But far too few are standing up and taking responsibility. So hopefully, hopefully you can help people wake up. Wake up from the insanity that says that a community dies on the vine because people refuse to organise. It's not for me to organise a currency system to help your community, but the tools we have will connect your community with other communities. But if you can't help yourself or help others by speaking to your neighbours, by speaking to your friends and saying, look, Enough's enough. Let's organise. You make tables, I fix cars. You can plant things, they can bake things. Let's get together. This is crazy that we're all out of work waiting for handouts. If you can do that, then the tools will be there. But it's up for you to take responsibility. Okay, well, let's talk quickly about common law. I know time is against me and I, I know that I've covered these points and I haven't come up to the new points yet. So I'm getting there. One sec. Given the time, just the one thing I'd say about the common law uh, is, well, updates to, to law. Let's get on to updates. On the updates, I have updated the section uh, under success in court and you'll see there that uh, a number of pages have been added, like common law, like... Uh, the uh, trusts and of course you'll still see that some of the links are not fully there i hope to have those uh, finished in the next few days and thank you for your patience as i said the purpose of those pages is not to uh, create any kind of false expectation that anyone can win or not win in court winning there are too many variables but the the theme that i've been saying and, and reason why we have changed the ecclesiastical deed to focus more on the remedy associated with the registrar is, is several fold. The first is I have been utterly astounded by the level of, well, I shouldn't have been, but I have been utterly astounded by the level of ignorance that you have all encountered in the courts. These judges, these prosecutors, these marshals, these sheriffs, I, I'm astounded how little of their own laws they know, let alone anything else. It's as if everyone has taken in their system a stupid pill and have become utterly stupid to the point that they, they know that they're dealing with something of immense power, but they find it incapable in themselves to follow their own, own rules. So there's no point in pursuing... And, and, and encouraging remedy in there when you're dealing with that level of stupidity. So the deed polls are better suited in many cases for people to pursue them through the registrar. And of course, if the registrars are in the same ilk, and they may well be in the same ilk of stupidity, then ultimately the dishonours will be rolled up to Rome to get the final remedy in terms of collapsing the slave rolls. But the theme that I've been trying to help and in promoting in, in recent time is the strength of maintaining your honour and not allowing yourself to be tricked into dishonour, which is what the system has done far too often to good people, where by tricking you into being dishonoured, by 
uh, filing to a 